Hey folks, AshleyAllThingsInitial.com and today what I want to do in a series of few videos is sort of review um, periosteal release for um, a number of different surgical procedures essentially primarily for ridge augmentation. This is an interesting article by uh, Greenstein et al. And in 2009 in JOP and they were talking about flap advancement and a number of uh, techniques to attain well tension free primary closure. Now that's critical uh, where well, you're doing uh, ridge augmentation uh, to get a tension-free flap. So, I've been thinking, a, a friend of mine, a colleague of mine, mentioned that when he was on a periodontal course, they used um, pork ribs to practice their periosteal release. So, uh, I went out today, got some, and I've just been practicing briefly, and it's a great teaching modality, and I wanted to go over, because um, I've been mentored by several oral surgeons, several periodontists, and I've seen different ways of doing this, but the end result is having tension-free flap, and it's through essentially um, releasing that periosteum. So, of course, number one is uh, flap design. Uh, make sure you can visualize, see everything. That's uh, fairly straightforward. One of the ones that I learned from oral surgery, and uh, it's some folks advocate it, some don't, is uh, along with your vertical release, is you is placing these little, I'm not sure what you call them, these little nicks that go inward toward the flap. You can argue that it will, it can compromise blood circulation or blood flow. Um, however, it does aid significantly in in, a, in making sure that that flap can be apically placed uh, tension free. So briefly, um, we're using the pork ribs. You can see here that uh, I had to thin them out. So if you're going to practice, which I do suggest you you do, is to uh, these ones are fairly beefy. You can practice on the on the other side. You can see I started here, but it doesn't um, it doesn't really. This is over. This tissue is fairly um, movable already. So uh, the periosteum underneath the meaty, meaty part is uh, pretty solid. So. Um, just briefly from actually the notes in Greenstein, uh, they mentioned that the periosteum is several cells thick. So we're going to pretend uh, up to 0.375 millimeters thick. So we're going to pretend that there's buccal mucosa, then you have a bit of muscle depending on where you are, and then uh, submucosa, then your periosteum. And that's how we're just going to uh, uh, mimic it today. So we'll just start off by, um, I mean, every, every situation is different in terms of flap design. But essentially, it comes down to making sure that you have enough uh, space and your flap is large enough to be able to visualize what you're doing. So we're just going to, um, I'll go on with this one. We're going to pretend this is uh, coronally, this is apically. And we're just going to start by, should we use another blade? So it's important to continually have uh, sharp 15s, 15 Cs. So we're going to keep a wide base. And this is across the ridge. And then straight back to connect that. And it's hard to see in this tissue, which and it's not bleeding, so you don't have any bleeding points. Let's just make those little nicks right there. There. So I'm going to make sure that I do get right to periosteum, that's critical. If not, you're trying to elevate and it's fairly difficult. I'll take my uh, Woodson periosteal elevator, whatever you may have, and just elevate. And again, every situation is different. So we're going to elevate a full mucoperiosteal flap. So that means, imagine full, so meaning uh, the, the mucosa is getting elevated and the periosteum as well, versus a split thickness, which we can show uh, later. Okay, so there it goes on that. Okay, let me switch back to this one, which is already elevated. So you can see here, now I've elevated the flap grab my adds and forceps. So whenever you're um, playing with uh, moving tissue or uh, needing to uh, move it around or grab it, it's best to, it's recommended to use adds and forceps so you're not using, uh, for example, a set of hemostats and kind of 
doing this and moving it, and now you're crushing the tissue instead of just grabbing one place and holding it. So right now what you can see is I've elevated the full mucoperiosteal flap. I have those vertical, I have, these are my vertical releasing incisions and these are these little nicks. So normally, <clears throat> you're extracting a tooth or whatnot, you just re reposition the tissue and off you go. You're set. Uh, you don't need to place, for example, this is my bone graft today. I know it's a cashew nut. You can laugh. So if I need to place that over, say this is a particular bone or um, a block graft, you, there's no way you're going to get primary closure with that. That's impossible. So that is the whole intent of the periosteal release. So what we're going to do now is just, there's a number of ways I've learned uh, several techniques. Uh, and essentially one, what you, essentially what you want to do is you want to release this. This is, there's no, not a lot of, um, there's, it's just not elastic, the periosteum. So one way is to grab a hold of the flap with your ads and forceps and just look for the places of tension and just slightly go at the base of the flap. You have to have, one of the problems I've always run into is not getting visual uh, access. I just can't see it. So that's why it's nice to practice here. I'm just going in one motion. I'm just releasing that periosteum. And you can see, you can see already I'm getting motion. I'm already releasing that, releasing the tension on that flap. And then again right here all the way across and the key is to go all the way across so you see how it just released so now what's happened is I'm getting into the submucosa and let's just see how I'm doing for releasing and just in that now I can hide my cashew but it appears that I need just a little more because if I do um, if I do go to close this, I'm going to be placing tension on that. So there's a few more ways. One of the suggestions um, is you can take a set of hemostats or a pair of uh, little scissors and just get in there and release the submucosa gently. Don't want to. And this is a very gentle procedure. Some folks I've seen do it fairly aggressive. There's one way, or you can also go three to five millimeters from that and just continue on. Let's get a sharp one now. Get a sharp 15 and just score the periosteum some more. So here's some more tension right here. And one of the things that I, the reason why I wanted to bring this is because I, I just saw another oral surgeon do this and watched his technique and I mean this usually come this process comes at the end of a surgery so now you can see I've got nice primary closure or able to and not tension so the way you can do that is you can lay the flap down. There are a number of ways. So folks have suggested we lay the flap down. Say this is the lingual portion or palatal. It just lays there and doesn't pull back. It doesn't retract. So this is a fairly large uh, ridge augmentation. Let me just try this. One of the other things I just learned in the uh, watching the OR was using a set of clamps like these to hold, say for example, your your block graft. Oh, it broke my cashew. So you can use these, clamp them down to hold onto your, say, ramus graft when you're uh, placing the uh, screws to fixate it. That was a great little trick that I learned. So I'm going to take this. Yeah, definitely got primary closure, tension free. And now I can just place my sutures. So suture. Whichever suture material you like to use after, and you can, I mean, you can place your membrane as well. 
if you go down that road and then suture. So the whole point of this was ensuring that you have tension-free uh, flap advancement for ridge augmentation, in this case cashew augmentation, and you can see the uh, different scoring of the periosteum. I hope that helps. Cheers.